A lot of RPG Maker horror games have released over the course of the last two decades, starting with Corpse Party back in 1996, followed by the original Kinder in 2003, which I can barely find any information on. Then 2008 rolled around, and we were given a little game called Ao Oni. Ao Oni is credited as setting many standards and tropes for the RPG Maker horror games to come. Created by no props, it follows a group of students exploring a mansion that's supposedly haunted before encountering a creature. It spawned adaptation after adaptation. Novels, manga, films, TV series, they really had it all. The game had four major updates, each of which was vastly different from the others. By the time the final version was released, dozens of well-known old-school Let's Players were covering the game. It was popular enough that even though I didn't know anything about the games until starting work on this video, I knew what the main antagonist looked like. Today, we're going to be talking about all four major releases of Ao Oni, and to do it as effectively as possible, we need to call in an expert. I think you should have gotten my help a bit sooner. I'm not just the Aoni guy, I'm the RPG Maker guy! And that includes horror. Which you then played this with a tree and a half. So I'm excited to talk about it. It's not hard to talk about this beautiful mess, so I'm gonna jump straight into talking about it. Wait, that's my thing. We begin with a quick story about a mansion on the outskirts of town. Rumor has it that a monster lives there. Two schoolboys named Hiroshi and Kazuya are walking down the street talking about Pokemon Platinum. Kazuya walks forward but is knocked back by a group of four bullies, Takuro, Takeshi, Megumi, and Ryota. They take the boys with them to the mansion from earlier. The bullies insist on going in. It's remarkably clean, almost like someone's still living there. Then we hear something shatter from a nearby room. Takuro insists that Kazuya go investigate, but Hiroshi steps forward to do it himself. He moves to the kitchen, finding a broken plate but nothing more. That is, until a door opens up behind him. Back in the main room, Takuro is going through a stereotypical bullying monologue. He finishes and tries to leave, only to find that the front door is locked and they are trapped inside. Something with thermal vision appears to be closing in on the group, specifically Megumi. We cut back to Hiroshi, where it's revealed that the door was opened by a cat. When he heads back to the main room, nobody is there. He looks around desperately for Kazuya, stumbling upon a suspicious shadow. seems that the silhouette was the monster. After a quick save reload, Hiroshi heads upstairs to explore the rest of the house. Takeshi is cowering in the closet of one of the backgrounds, shivering and refusing to respond. After searching through empty room after empty room, Hiroshi accidentally finds a hole underneath a bed that he can drop down through to reach a locked wing of the house full of even more useless rooms. Easily half of this playthrough was spent aimlessly wandering around. There's no indication of where to go next, so after something new happens, we had to re-explore the entire building while examining every Every single thing. We've unlocked a useless corner. What? Oh my god. Purple guy! So that's, uh, the back half of the monster, at least. I'm not really sure why he can appear here when you examine the door, especially since we haven't been properly introduced to the monster. Now that it's clear the Oni is no longer in that bathroom, Hiroshi heads downstairs to scope it out. The bathtub is full of a dark liquid which, when drained, reveals Ryota's body with the key to the library. Hiroshi heads off to use this key. There we go. It's him. It's the Ow Odie. Is he actually roaming? Uh you'll uh, you'll probably find out. That's so so thank you, Aaron. I mean I don't how do how do I answer? <laughs> yes or no? Is he actually roaming? Like, is he in uh, something that's roaming ro yeah. ah! There he is. What was that? I was my fair noise. He scared me. <laughs> so let's talk about two things. First, the design. While this may look like a heavily photoshopped face of some random guy, the creator said in an interview that they drew the face themselves. I'm sure this was probably a lot more terrifying in 2008, but it's honestly just funny looking nowadays. There were quite a few moments with the Oni where he appeared and I couldn't help but laugh. Second, the chases. It took us a while to figure out how the chases worked in this original version. In every other game, you either have to outrun the Oni for 10 seconds or find a hiding spot. In this version, you have to run from the Oni for 20 seconds, and you cannot hide in the closet that Takeshi used. This time we had to use the bedroom key we picked up in the library to find the room that Megami is hiding inside. Oh. Lock the door now. How? <laughs> I think you were supposed to turn around. <laughs> Hiroshi locks the door behind him, joining Megami inside. He wants to leave and find a way out, but Megami is too scared and elects to stay behind. 
Hiroshi moves to the room from the first encounter, but the Oni quickly appears, initiating another chase. The bedroom Megami is in seems to act as a safe room, so whenever a chase would occur, I would just sprint over to there and wait for the music to stop. Hiroshi finds the tatami room key, which contains literally nothing, so he just gets back to searching. After over 15 minutes of aimless wandering, we gave up. We googled it. Apparently, we didn't look underneath this table from the correct side. Wonderful. Hiroshi moves to the attic, using the key from underneath that table. Inside is a flashlight and a wardrobe. He uses the flashlight to search inside of each of the closets and wardrobes. The attic wardrobe reveals another key, gaining us access to the archive room. We checked every single shelf one by one, finding nothing inside. Shocker. Hiroshi walks outside, stumbling into Takuro, who is worried about Megami and wants to check in on her. Hiroshi hands over the bedroom key so he may do so before instantly getting bodied the second he walked out the door. Hiroshi loops around the building, going back to grab the bedroom key from the corpse. The chase music stops so he can search around again in relative peace. In a nearby room, there's a hidden switch underneath a desk that you can only access by pushing a chair out of the way. It reveals a hidden door behind a bookshelf. Hiroshi walks inside, discovering a cell. Just in case, he closes the door behind him, which proves to be a good idea. You notice how tight his ass is, by the way? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's the fable! Oh my god, this is great. Oh, there it is. <laughs> He wants are so are you okay, Ben? <laughs> it's scared him. It's scared him. He's sort of like an animated <laughs> cutscene. That was not real. That was not real. After the Oni leaves, Hiroshi used the basement key downstairs, finding an assortment of hallways and doors. One room has a shovel as well as a photo inside. Chase music begins playing, and Hiroshi bolts to the closet. Hiroshi moves downwards, finding a cavernous tunnel. There's a gate blocking the path, but a slight breeze can be heard on the other side, indicating an exit of some kind. Hiroshi takes a shovel to an indent in the wall to reveal a new path, a room with a single door. This is actually a mirror of the second floor, meaning that there should be another room to the south. After using the shovel where the door should be, the key to this gate is acquired. This is the only kind of puzzle in this version of the game. The other three versions are actually all full-blown puzzle games. Hiroshi moves through the gate, finding a rope ladder to use as an exit. He realizes that he can't go with Megami still trapped inside, so he returns to bring her with and escape. They begin their trek to the basement when everything cuts to black. We see Kazuya sitting in a bathroom alone, groggily wondering when he fell asleep. He walks out of the bathroom, then straight out the front door with no issues. We cut back to Hiroshi and Megumi, who are almost at the ladder. Unfortunately, the Oni has taken matters into his own hands, or I guess teeth in this case. He destroyed the rope ladder, forcing the other two to run away. Kazuya searches around for his friend, finding a well with a destroyed rope ladder. He grabs a replacement from a shed nearby, descending to try and find Hiroshi, who is still being chased by the Oni. They run into each other in the hall, with Hiroshi screaming to run away. The three survivors run into the night, finally free of the Oni. Our Oni 1.1 was kind of a mess. The map is huge and largely bloated with little to do and almost no directions to follow. It doesn't help that the keys never disappear from your inventory, making it easy to forget or miss new keys that you've just gotten. On multiple occasions, I picked up an item, but a chase started immediately so I had no clue what I had grabbed. Both of these issues get fixed as the series goes on, but the second game's map is still needlessly big. I think the concept of this game is cool, if a bit silly in execution, but a lot of the game design makes it something that I don't plan to revisit. How did you- I chewed through the ropes. But you had duct tape on your mouth. I chewed through the duct tape. While I do agree with Ben for almost everything, I also have to appreciate this version for setting a lot of trends the rest follow. What I've called the Ow Oni Consistencies, which of our favorites include the bathroom and the cell scene. But there's something funny about that. It sets a lot of trends, but it's also completely different. Since this was the one Ow Oni game I never experienced myself, it was really strange. The two extra characters, Kazuya and Skinwalker Hiroshi, the different personalities, the shape of the mansion, and so on. I have to say, if you only played or watched the final version and saw this for the first time, you'd be baffled, whereas with the second, which we're about to get to, you'd recognize a lot. And with that wonderful experience out of the way, let's move on to the good ones we enjoyed. 
The next full release was version 3.0. We begin with a complete stranger standing in a familiar house. A shot of the Oni's thermal vision implies that he won't be living for much longer. We cut to the group from last time, entering the house on a different day. The character lineup has changed quite drastically. The original Hiroshi is gone, replaced by Ryota, who has taken his name. Kazuya is nowhere to be seen. Megumi has been renamed Mika, and our group is no longer a group of bullies. Their new personalities from this game are the basis for the rest of the versions. Thank you. God, they changed this. But if you notice, the text boxes aren't following whoever is talking this time. While it was kind of unique, it was hard to follow and disorientating. As Ben said, their personalities are different. Takuro, the leader, is a bit cocky, headstrong, and confident. Mika is very one note, basically only being there to be Takuro's girlfriend. Takeshi, who I got to voice the long play, I did a great job with it, is a cowardly wuss who hides and has hysteric episodes. And lastly, the real Hiroshi is a nerd type. He talks a lot about the monster not possibly being real, and mentions some other sides nerd stuff. Something else of note is the inconsistent portraits in both this version and the next version. For some reason, every single one is in a different art style. Takuro's is in a relatively normal anime art style, while Takeshi's looks like clip art. Hiroshi looks like Norman from The Promised Neverland on steroids, and Mika is bit crushed to hell and back. Other than the fact that the kitchen is to the right this time, not a ton is different plot-wise. They remodeled the entire house, but it mostly has the same rooms. The shadow still passes the bathroom door. So, this is a great segue to mention what our Oni consistencies are! And our Oni consistency is when our Oni has something that shows up in all or almost all of its versions. I mentioned before about the bathroom and the cell, but that's not all. What also follows through is the library, Takashi in the wardrobe, falling through the floor, plate smash, meeting Takaro near the middle of the game, the tatami room, the rope ladder, the rope ladder getting eaten. I might have missed a few because there's a lot. If you want an example of an almost our Oni consistency, think of something like the screwdriver or the our Oni toilet. They only appear in three versions. Anything that appeared in two or less, not an almost our only consistency. The tatami room has moved to the original location of the kitchen, with an extra locked room to the right. They also forgot to give this wall a hitbox. Hiroshi heads upstairs and has the same exact encounter with Takeshi in the wardrobe. After leaving the room and waiting for a bit, he disappears, leaving the library key behind. Inside, we experience the same encounter as before, this time with the ability to hide in the wardrobe Takeshi was in. My favorite part about this is the switch to a first-person perspective for these scenes. When you enter the wardrobe, you cannot see anything. You have to use sound cues to determine if you are safe, and the Oni is smart enough to realize where you are and wait if you've used the same hiding spot too many times. Hiroshi moves to the attic, finding a wooden box in a wardrobe and two indentations in the wall waiting to be filled by something. In the bedroom with the hole in the floor, there's half of a note with some unusual shapes on it. After dropping through the floor, Hiroshi finds himself in a piano room. The piano has three numbers written on some of the keys. What? Oh, to be fair, you're probably staring right down at the key, like the, the keys of the piano. He could have easily have snuck up behind you. That was a great scare, since the player was fully enraptured in the puzzle in front of them. After reloading, the escape is pretty easy. There are multiple ways you can just flat out loop the Oni in this game. You can run through the archival room over and over again, getting the Oni stuck in the hallway. Alternatively, you can just run to the room with the hole, drop down to the piano room, then run back up the stairs until the timer runs out. Hiroshi moves to the bathroom. This time, the tub is lacking a corpse and has the bedroom key instead of the library key. Takuro is inside of the archive, and Mika is in the bedroom, although the group remains split up to cover more ground. There's a matchbox under the table in one room which can be used to light a fireplace and burn the wooden box, revealing the hallway key inside. The hallway key opens the locked door to the right of the tatami room, where the Oni is politely waiting for Hiroshi from inside a closet. One quick chase later, and we can combine the paper from earlier with a second piece from the same room. Now this, this right here is peak, and I mean peak, our Oni puzzles. It's simple, it's satisfying to figure out, and has a little bit of a twist to it too. How the puzzle works is that you have to figure out the shapes on your note that you picked up are the same shapes as the piano keys, which means what's on the note is a code. But here's the twist I was talking about. Two of the symbols are flipped, so you've got to envision in your head what notes that would be unflipped. This for me is the most iconic puzzle in our Oni, besides one later that's it's funny, but it's stupid. In the room above the kitchen, there's a hidden safe. After inputting the code from the piano puzzle, Hiroshi acquires the study key. The study is the new version of the room with the switch from before, meaning all we have to do is move the chair and reveal the door behind the bookshelf. The cell is still here, with the same key and the same cutscene. The basement starts off exactly the same as last time, with the exception of us just getting the gate key right off the bat. 
Upon moving downwards, Hiroshi finds everyone else all huddled together in one big room. Before the conversation can get anywhere beyond Takeshi being a dick- A meanie head? Uh, yeah, a meanie head. Uh, it's revealed that the Oni was behind the text box. He bites off Takaro's head while everyone else scatters. Ben comes across a room after the sad, oh so sad death of Takaro, where the entire room is taken up by a table and four chairs, the chairs being movable. The problem is, the only way to get through is by pushing the bottom chair into the way of the door, blocking it. There's a door above behind a bookshelf that's locked. Now, what you have to do is move the bookshelf in front of that door and backtrack to a previous room that will be above the table room on a map, and then find another hidden door behind a bookshelf, and then go through the unlocked door in the table room, and then go through and unlock the door in the table room, and make it through so you be our good close friends, Grieving Mika and Scaredy Cat turned Rudy Cat Takeshi. While they wait behind the bars of a cell for safety, Hiroshi moves forward. The next room is a good example of an odd game design choice. See the odd borders on this room? The small black bits in the bottom corners are actually interactable. This game does that sometimes, just hiding doorways and items and places like that. It blends in perfectly with the background of the game, making it somewhat of a pain to locate. Through the door is the same tunnel as before with the same rope ladder. Hiroshi goes back to get his friends. When they return to the rope ladder, the Oni has destroyed it once again. Takeshi face plants like a bumbling moron during the chase, leaving a healthy margin for Mika and Hiroshi to escape in. Just kidding, he somehow didn't slow down at all and saw us as we hid inside the wardrobe. After looping the Oni in the archive, Hiroshi finds a piece of metal on Takeshi's corpse that can fit into one of the indents in the wall upstairs. But uh oh, Hiroshi feels a little bit sweepy. Better go catch some Z's in the fluffy bed. After Hiroshi falls asleep and wakes up, the craziest reveal happens! It was all for Hiroshi's birthday! Now he was in the Aoni costume all this time, none of his friends died, and they all sing happy birthday. What a happy ending! It's so nice of- ah, uh, never mind. It was just a dream. After waking up to the sounds of thumps, Hiroshi follows the noise and finds Squato the Oni smashing Miki to paste. God, Mika! While Hiroshi runs for his life, you might be wondering who Naoki is. So there's another piece of metal next to Mika's corpse. Once inserted into the final indent, a staircase drops from the ceiling outside. I completely missed this fact and explored the entire house again before Eren pointed it out. I am smart, I promise. The staircase takes Hiroshi to an odd circular room full of blue scribbles. Above this is a simple blue pressure plate puzzle. Solving this results in access to a room full of a ton of Onis in different forms. I like this one. In a room to the left, we're greeted with Blob Oni. He very slowly chases Hiroshi when approached, making grabbing the front door key from this room very easy. Now, we just need to get outside. There's going to be a final chase, for sure. Hiroshi dashes away during one final chase, escaping as the lone survivor. Now, this was an Aoni anyone can enjoy. Not as good as the final version, but the sheer amount of improvements and fun all of us had in that VC was immense compared to the first. But the first felt like a slog, and almost every moment did we feel like we had something to do in 3.0. The addition of puzzles gave us a good break from the chases, and the new cool Onis we got to see were interesting, the fact almost everyone had personalities, and this one gave us the most fright so far. If I had to rate 3.0, I'd definitely give it 8 squadros out of 10 clockers. Other than a few visual and hitbox glitches, I really liked 3.0. The story was more interesting, and I loved seeing the unique deaths for each character. They're morbid, but cool. It was such a drastic improvement from the original that I'm sure I saw it through slightly rose-tinted glasses, but I'm alright with that fact. The next full version is 5.2, which was... Uh, let's just get through it. This version starts off the same as all the others. Hiroshi walks inside, he finds a broken plate, his friends disappear, we try to get into the bathroom, then he finds Takeshi in the wardrobe, the Oni appears in the library, and Hiroshi finds the key underneath a book this time. Wow, really spicing up that gameplay. During the chase, he tries to hide in Takeshi's wardrobe, but this handkerchief took up far too much space to hide, forcing him to run instead. We find a key in the bathtub like always, then grab a map from the wall. The house layout is a lot more compact this time, which I personally think is an improvement. Everything has a purpose now instead of just existing for scale. In the archive room, Takuro barges in on Hiroshi. They have a quick chat about the whole being trapped in a mansion with a murderous monster thing, then split back up. At the bottom of the archive room, there's a photo that acts as a puzzle. There are five holes and five spheres with text on them. TH, IF, MF, RF, and LF. They clearly have to be put in the correct order, whatever that might be. Wait, I- 
fucking know. I know it's fingers. Middle finger, ring finger, index finger. It's fucking fingers. It's fingers. The frame can now be removed, revealing a paper that says pass, accompanied by an assortment of holes. This is an infamously frustrating puzzle due to the inability to properly translate it for other cultures. The files of this game literally have a text document entitled, please do read this or you will get stuck, giving a partial explanation. Hi viewers, your favorite product salesman here, Aaron Ioniitis Curus, or Aaron for short. I've got a question for you. Are you suffering from Ioniitis or Abacus fever? Well, have I got the word document for you? After I've done reading it, not only will you understand the pain we felt during this, but you'll also be safe from what we We've got. I'll read it now. In general, the puzzles in this game can be quite tricky at times, but there was one puzzle which is fairly Japan specific and that you need the knowledge of a certain, let's say tool, on how to use it. It's what to do with counting. So far, I have not been able to come up with a satisfying idea of how to translate this puzzle into English or German version. I consider the way it is now too hard and basically untranslated since the game refers to a very special cultural item and context which needs to be translated. However, I've not been able to come up with, for example, any similar tool that is known slash used in the English or German speaking world. The puzzle in question is concerned with an item called cipher, a paper that says pass on top and four columns with some black dots in it. Maybe you have to know the specific tool, maybe you'll be able to solve the puzzle by yourself. But in case you're stuck because of this puzzle, a hint to solve it is at the far end of this text file. The hint at the bottom explains that we're basically just screwed. We had to google the tool in question, a soroban, which is described as a Japanese abacus, and learn how to read it before proceeding with the puzzle. The translator couldn't just put the answer at the bottom because it's entirely randomized and they didn't have the time to chart out every possible outcome, which is completely fair. Thankfully, someone on the Aoni wiki did have the time and patience for that. We found the answer, a code, but it's not usable until later. For now, we move on. Hiroshi finds a memo in the bedroom with a hole on the floor, seemingly for the piano puzzle once again. This time the piano keys are caked in red paint, definitely not blood, and Hiroshi needs to wash it off. Using some detergent from the bathroom and the handkerchief that almost got him murdered, Hiroshi scrubs away the paint, revealing three numbers. The Oni appears and initiates another chase. You think he's gone, Ben? He's gone, you can come out the closet now. Get out the goddamn closet. No. Get out the goddamn closet. No. Get out the closet. Fine. That's what I thought, coward. Hit it interject again before the new and cool stuff that came in this awesome version. I would say that Ben loved staying in the closet for longer than necessary because he always believed the Aoni would be waiting. Everyone comment Ben is a wuss for a prize, the prize being my appreciation. In a nearby room, there's some oil atop a cabinet which Hiroshi uses to fill his lighter before moving to the tatami room. The Oni is waiting inside the closet once again, initiating a short chase. We do the piano puzzle for the nursery key, then find Mika and a screwdriver. The screwdriver is the more useful of those two options, so Hiroshi grabs it, then moves on. Hiroshi can use the lighter on his map to reveal a hidden passageway. Using the plate shard, we cut open the wall where the entrance should be, but a door is in the way without a doorknob. The screwdriver can be used on this door in the attic to remove its handle and unlock the next area of the house. Aaron and I both really liked this puzzle. It made you think without being needlessly elaborate. Yes! This door leads to the basement, where a chase immediately begins. You need the code from the Abacus puzzle, so I hope you remember it off the top of your head, otherwise you're dead. But we finally made it to something new! After we get chased a bit, we find ourselves in a basement. We explore a bit and find three important things. One, a circuit breaker. That's a surprise tool that'll help us later. Two, an equation that doesn't work unless you look at it upside down. And three, a torn note that seems like the beginning of an equation. We throw around a bit and proc a random only event, where he shows up behind... I think a bookshelf. The sprite isn't very clear. After dealing with that, we explore for a bit and find a book with a torn page. We attach the torn node to the book and it becomes an unsolved equation. We explore again, but this time we're lost, confused, scared. Until I remember that there's a hidden door at the bottom of one of the rooms, which leads to Ben's favorite part of this game. After heading through the hidden doorway, the lights flicker off. Hiroshi needs to reach the breaker, but the only way to see is using a lighter that illuminates the eight tiles directly surrounding you. Unfortunately, the second he steps outside, the Oni spawns and snaps his neck like a twig. I will never understand this section. They took the basement, made it into one of the longest and most maze-like areas in any of the versions of the game, then took away your ability to see anything before throwing you into a chase. Aaron could actually see the map even in complete darkness using what I call his Omega Game Revision and what he calls his Melted Retinas. I'm fairly certain our monitors just have different settings, so maybe you can see the map on your device too. Just keep in mind. For me, it was pitch black. In the end, we found the breaker and we moved on. Moving back to the hidden room, Hiroshi uses a screwdriver to remove a plate from the wall, revealing a safe. The code from the equation puzzle can be used here to unlock the next area. 
the annex. Oh my god, it's the best puzzle in the game! The doll puzzle is a true masterpiece above all puzzles. What I said about the piano puzzle, forget it. So how the doll puzzle works is that you don't do it. You have to figure out a bunch of other parts to get a doll head so you can insert it into the spot instead of somehow sliding the doll into the hole itself. Because here's the funny part, if you try and do the puzzle, it's impossible. It's a troll, a prank even. By God, did everybody love this puzzle. By everybody, I mean only me, because I was the only one laughing. After that living nightmare, we head upstairs, finding a note on the wall with some incoherent nonsense scribbled on it. This will be important later. At this point, we need to talk about the sheer density of the Oni appearances. In the rest of the house, there was a chase every so often, so it would properly catch you off guard. In the annex, he appears so frequently that it's not even a surprise, it's just expected. It only acts as an inconvenience as you dodge broken floorboards and return to the basement to get rid of him. As Hiroshi explores a new room, a being known only as Roach Oni smashes through the window. If you get even slightly close to it, you're dead. Using a plank with some holes in it to cover up the paper with the scribbles, we find a new code to jot down for later use. Next, we take the same plank and use it to cross a gap in the first floor. There's a bookcase in the room that this leads to with a gray book on it. You can take the odd one out, but there's nothing written inside. Hiroshi burns the book, finding a key within. Roach Oni is in the corner of a room with a light bulb inside, and Hiroshi has to sneak in to grab it. But where do we put a light bulb? In the decapitated head of one of those wooden dolls from the doll puzzle, of course. After turning it on, it points to a hidden safe with a lattice key inside. Unfortunately, there's nowhere else to go from here. Just kidding, you have to put the book from the basement into the bookshelf within an empty slot to reveal yet another hidden passageway. Hiroshi unlocks this new area with the key, entering the first room on his right and discovering a puzzle where you move a piece representing the Oni around a map while trying to kill a piece representing a victim. Hiroshi returns to the room, beating the puzzle and revealing another hidden bookshelf passageway, this time to a cell. It's time for the infamous scene. Yes. Star piece obtained from the muscle. What? Oh my god! He was fucking determined! Since the Oni has super speed, Hiroshi moves to a different room instead. There's a puzzle on the wall where you have to fill in these shapes with four colors to make sure that none of the tiles of the same color are touching. Upon completion, it drops the moon piece that slots into this ominous black rectangle in a room to the north. Underneath the rug is a key to a padlock, which we can use to lock ourselves into the cell so Oni can't go Barry Allen on us. Hiroshi takes the star piece and places it into the slot before moving downstairs even further. He turns on his lighter, revealing Takeshi in a small room all alone. Takeshi begins feeling remorseful for telling everyone to explore the house, prompting him to run away cry screaming. There's a safe left over in the room. Hiroshi uses the board from the hallway on the four-color puzzle, revealing the safe combination. Inside is the sun piece, which completes the indentation puzzle. This reveals our millionth hidden doorway, leading to a very familiar rope ladder. Something unique about this version is there's two different endings actually. One where you just leave now and miss an hour any consistency, leaving your friends to die like the monster you are, or go back to find them. If you decide to leave now, not much happens. Hiroshi just kind of forgets it all happens and goes on with his life. But if you go back to find them then, you better be ready to put in the work, because it is easy. Sorry to trick the viewers with the idea that it's hard, but it really wasn't. First you either find Takaru or Takashi, because if you try to get Mika, she won't leave without a boyfriend. Takaru is waiting in the library where Hiroshi says Takaru, and Takaru says, abruptly joins us. You'd think with that kind of response, he was the only all along! Kidding, again. After getting Takaro, you can either get Mika or Takashi. We got Mika first. She's waiting in the same spot. Now to find Takashi. You have to search every wardrobe to hope to find the right one, because he's in a random one. After all three are gathered, you return to the ladder to find that gosh darn Odie eating it again. Please, Mr. Odie, we just want to leave this version already. So after escaping the Odie, we escape through the window to a shed where the Odie ambushes us there. We loop around and escape through our shed and finally escape the Odie mansion for the almost last time. This version has an epilogue showing the survivors share traumatic memories. Takeshi has night terrors and has been skipping school while Hiroshi and Takaro hope that it was all just some sick dream. We cut to a group of new characters entering the mansion as the Oni watches in the background. 
I did not like this version. It took everything from 3.0 and failed to develop it further. Many changes felt needless, like an excuse for an extra cheap death or a quick startle. It subverted expectations for those who had played the previous versions, but these changes made some of the puzzles convoluted for newcomers. It felt like the creator was trying to make things as different as possible without thinking too hard about what that meant from a game design standpoint. Now, I know Ben didn't like it, and I don't either, but I honestly think 5.2 had a lot of decent ideas that it just didn't play out properly. The way to escape the mansion was cool, some of the newer puzzles besides 2 were fun, but overall, I didn't like it. I know for a fact the final version will make all these ideas feel complete and finish the series of versions in a great way. Version 6.23 is the most recent update and the final version of the game. If you've seen a Let's Play on YouTube covering this game, it was most likely this version. It starts off essentially identical other than one major thing. The character portraits are actually fixed. The creator drew them all on their own, creating a consistent art style that ties everything together. I love the thin line art and soft colors. For this playthrough, we even had a full group to do voices for all of the characters. What's wrong, Takeshi? You scared? Blah blah blah, the intro is all the same until about the basement. One important thing to point out though, is the bathroom is back! Our only consistency, we'd love our only consistencies. Oh my god, yes! The mansion layout has actually changed one final time, making it harder to loop the Oni and easier to navigate. They even cut down on the needless chases and removed some of the worst puzzles. They did actually add one more puzzle, which is a combination of ones from the past. There's a crayon drawing of a map on the wall showing a secret entrance near the tatami room. You cut it open to retrieve the doorknob like last time, leading to a darkened room. Your lighter still doesn't work very well, but they fixed this issue by adding candles to the centers of dark rooms that will fully illuminate them. Even though Hiroshi doesn't look buff in his portrait anymore, his strength prevails as he pushes this entire three-segment bookshelf out of the way to reveal a door. Hey, look, a cell! The key to the basement is in the cell. Hiroshi moves to unlock it, but here's a scream from Mika upstairs. That's right, we're back to the gruesome deaths from the second game. Hiroshi runs off and hides in the closet before heading to the basement to explore. They improved the layout greatly, removing all the fluff and reducing the rooms to only what was necessary. Ben, do you think you could take our own in a fight? I have questions. <laughs> now she's the Aoni. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking. That's right, I wasn't technically trolling. The Aoni could be anyone. It could be you, it could be me, it could even be Ben! How dare you? Oh, sorry. Hiroshi moves to the next room in the basement, locating a cell with some blue writing on the wall. This is actually one of my favorite puzzles. From up close, it looks like complete nonsense, but when viewed from the other side of the bars, it reveals a code. There's a drawing on the side indicating that this is what you're supposed to do, yet I somehow completely failed to connect the dots until rewatching this footage to write the script. This code opens up to a safe with the annex key inside. When Hiroshi goes to unlock the annex, Mika only appears once again for another chase. The annex is just about identical to version 5.2, save the obnoxious chases every few minutes. The only real difference is the addition of a basement. But before we go there, Hiroshi finds Takeshi in a darkened room on the first floor. He runs away in fear, per usual, and Hiroshi continues to the doll puzzle. Takeshi is practicing his gymnastics using a rope contraption in the doll puzzle room, so Hiroshi leaves him be. He seems a bit busy. After completing the puzzle, Takeshi takes a rough tumble. Poor guy. Hiroshi leaves to go get help, but it's okay. Takeshi is completely fine, if a little bit more purple than usual. With Takeshi only off our tail, we continue on deeper into the annex, leading us into a new area. We explore around a bit, finding bits and bobs for all different kinds of puzzles, until we reach a dead end with a door. We had to use a bookmark and the screwdriver to figure out a code for the door using colors. Way better than the previous puzzle. The following room has both Mika Oni and Takeshi Oni. Hiroshi hides from this double feature using a wardrobe in one of the two newly unlocked rooms. In the other wardrobe, Hiroshi finds Takuro. He claims to have twisted his ankle, handing over a bottle of vinegar because it's dangerous to go alone. Thanks. This is actually quite useful when combined with one of the previously aforementioned bits and bobs, a rusty key, making the item usable. The basement has one other room, a bathroom with bookshelves in it for some reason. Hiroshi uses his sleeper build to push the bathtub out of the way, revealing a staircase downwards. This was another one of those situations where you really have no indication of what to do, leaving experimentation your only option. 
The staircase leads to a barred off room that our rusty key can now unlock. Inside are three paintings with buttons underneath, one blue, one red, and one yellow. Another one of the random items we found earlier was a disc with these three colors on it. It has six notches with an arrow pointing to where you have to start. After noticing that, it's a simple matter of inputting the color code to get a metal rod. When combined with the disc, this creates a brand new key leading to the room with the rope ladder. It's our consistency time! We grab our good, injured friend Takaro and head to the rope ladder, but of course, it's being eaten by the owner. You think it'll taste damn good given this is the fourth time he's eaten it, but who am I to judge, I suppose? Takaro falls, dies probably, and we're chased. After doing the safety dance despawning the Oni, we head back to the rope ladder room and get the back door key. Similar to the last version, Hiroshi places a light bulb in the empty head slot for one of the dolls, indicating a hidden passageway that can be revealed with the plate shard. The back door key unlocks the door leading in, allowing passage to some kind of weird backyard passageway thing that is completely blocked off on all sides. A door at the end leads into an entirely new building containing an assortment of random rooms as well as a prayer room of some kind. Hiroshi explores, but he isn't safe from the Oni yet. One of the remaining rooms has blue scribbles all over the walls, although they abruptly stop partway down. Cutting off this section of the wallpaper reveals a door to another room. The second Hiroshi steps in, the Oni chase music starts playing and he sprints into a wardrobe to hide. Upon exiting, the entire room has been covered in the same blue scribbles as outside. Hiroshi grabs a die from the desk and moves to an adjacent room with a dice portrait on the wall. There are five dice as well as one open slot. When the new die is added, all six dice begin to glow. The glowing dots are representative of the rows of seats in the prayer room, each of which has a switch beneath to press. Hiroshi presses them in the order the dice indicate, moving this shrine thing out from on top of a hidden staircase. Down below is a hallway with a locked door and a painting on the wall with three empty slots. The first piece is found by descending through a hole in the floor. The second is found by unscrewing a painting in this study room. Uh -huh. Cat Oni? Cat Oni? Okay then. Uh, what the fuck is that? Like meat water right there. Um, now this, this right here is beautiful. That's my handsome Fuwati. He's a sort of Oni. He's described in the novels, yes there are novels, as being an evolved version of Aoni. The way he works is that he moves a bit slower than the normal Oni, but occasionally darts forward, trying to catch you off guard. Oh, I love you, Fish King. Hiroshi finds one other room, the Ao Oni room. Look at these rascals go. I like this one. Hiroshi walks inside, but when he gets too close to the gate, the Onis escape. The only way out is to spam the open door button on the entrance until it just eventually works. Upon returning, the Onis are all gone and Hiroshi can retrieve the final blue piece. Takuro appears behind him, safe and sound somehow. It seems he managed to escape the Oni after all. He immediately joins the party, and our duo heads to the painting room to insert the final piece. Here comes a predictable but well-executed moment. Obviously Takaro is dead, but he's in the party. Well, when you insert the final piece of the puzzle, or try to, you might notice two things. The chase music is playing, and Takaro in the party is looking a little purple and tall. After leaving the menu, you better be quick, or Takaro Oni will get you. After escaping Takaro Oni, Hiroshi returns to the room and moves through the newly unlocked door. This leads outside, where a final chase takes place before Hiroshi escapes through the woods. After a brief explanation of what happens to him, we get a clip of the Oni's next victim. That concludes the base game of Ao Oni 6.23, but we aren't quite done yet. By changing your name in the starting screen, you can enable cheats. Inputting South Park results in a short 5 minute bonus experience with all of the characters in the South Park art style. Yes, that includes the Oni. What? <laughs> oh god. Oh, oh my, my god! god. <gasps> they imitate the vulgarity and violence of the show, slowly killing off every single character. Hey, stop it, dude! Don't put a f***ing message window on top of me! <laughs> oh my lord. No! Oh my god! They killed Takeshi! They're fucking nibbling on him! He's eating him? Well, wait! Huh? Me, dude, Takeshi. Takeshi? It seems as though it wanted to talk to the last survivor. There's some questions. What are you people? Why do you exist here? Who sent you here? I didn't do anything to you, but now I'm all alone. Uh... You ignore me. Then I guess it's bye-bye. Upon escaping, Jimbo appears and shoots the Oni straight in the face. Why did they add this?
The creator absolutely brought back the quality in this version. With tighter design all around, the game is a lot more fun to play. Adding the ability to make the Oni wear the hairstyles of each deceased characters felt like it was embracing the comedic side of the series, unintentionally or otherwise. The majority of the puzzles were enjoyable, and I got quite a few scares because they properly spaced them out this time. I can absolutely see why this was the most played version. It's hands down the best one, and the one that I recommend you try out. This is a very dear series for me. It what started my obsession with RPG Maker and essentially the horror side of it. While it's quite bad compared to the rest, it's still very charming and a fun experience to see where a lot of the tropes started. My heart goes out to you no props and only for the fun. Specifically only this version though, because only 2 and 3 looks like woof. If you want to see the full gameplay recording for all four versions of the game, it's linked in the description below on my second channel. I also have a Discord server and a Patreon for those who are interested. I hope to see you all again. Have a great rest of your day.